welcome everybody to NDC Front Row and a preview of the CCSU football season of 2013. I'm here, of course, with the head coach of the Blue Devils, Jeff McInerney, and my partner, Mark Robbins, on the radio and, of course, on the internet at CCSUBlueDevils.com. Well, Coach, I know you wrapped up your final scrimmage on Saturday. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it was one of four, and it was a mock game, and we were very excited about the tempo and our execution and the way the young men went out and competed at the end of a long camp. And I know you're really trying to bring uh, kind of your old philosophy back to CCSU football. Obviously, you want to run the ball, but you all also want to do th some things on defense, like gang tackling. You've been uh, mentioned that a few times in the preseason because you really weren't happy with your defensive execution last year. No doubt, Bruce. Uh, one of the things that we, we had lost our fundamentals. And obviously, we lost our pursuit. We, did, we lost our basic fundamentals that it takes to win football games. Forget about scheme. You have to be able to tackle. And you have to be able to keep the ball inside and in front of you. And if you cannot do that, it does not matter what you run. We spent a lot of time in the offseason on those fundamentals from offseason workouts in the spring football throughout the summer. We used our strength coach, Mike Erickson, to develop drills. Spent a lot of time with Mike on correlating drills without football, without a football and a helmet, how to get those skills taught. It was a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and we got better. It was really uh, sessions with Mike Erickson were fun. No <laughs> doubt. Mike is a uh, wonderful teacher, and we're very blessed to have him here at CSU. He deserves a lot of credit. And like any program, the strength coach is actually the head football coach in the summer because football coaches cannot be out there. We do not violate that rule. We do not have footballs. And we do not have interns out there that are football coaches. So he has to be a big part of what we're teaching on the development of the young men. We have a game in five days at James Madison, but uh, you actually went down there a couple of years ago, made a game of it, 14-9 to nine victory for James Madison. What about taking care of the football as, as well? How important is that going to be this season? Oh, it's the biggest point. Uh, in 2009 and 2010, our championship seasons, we had 11 and 13 turnovers. Um, in 2011, when we won four games, we were in the high 20s. Last year, we were in the mid-20s and won two games. If we don't protect the football, we're not going to win the game. How about experience for this team? You bring back a lot of guys that saw a lot of action uh, last year. Does it make it easier to, to bring them into camp and get things done in a smoother, uh, a faster fashion? Well, Mark, that's a great question. We really have worked at this since the end of last season and the beginning of spring semester on our leadership and our accountability and why things went astray. And in any program, it starts with the leadership. I could sit there and say there's a lot of reasons why this happened, but it had to start with me. And I could not ask them to change if I did not change. The assistant coaches didn't change, and they didn't change. But I had to change first. So this process started in the off season. It wasn't something coming into camp. We had a wonderful off season, a very good spring. It carried into the summer. Uh, when we came back to camp, I noticed that we were in very good physical condition, a credit to Mike Erickson, a credit to the players, that they worked diligently and uh, were in good shape, and the ebb and flow of fall practice was put into place. When you look at the experience that you have depth-wise, a lot of people saw action last year, and you, you have pretty good depth when you – take an overview of the two deep, a lot of experience, guys have played. Will we see a lot of the depth early in this season? Do you plan on building that as the year goes on? That's a great question. We, we have quite a bit of depth, and one of the things, depth without skill means absolutely nothing. And that's where body movements, body positioning is incredibly teachable. And that's why we started with the basics. And you should see quite a few players playing. You can see up to 22 on defense and up to probably 15 or 16 on offense. And the fact that we've worked on their body movements, their posture, their tempo, their skill level, their base fundamentals, um, it, it's really paid off. Talk about some individual players here, Coach. Uh, first starting off with dynamic player, and one of the best backs in FCS, Rob Holloman. Uh, great question, Bruce. Uh, Rob actually led the NEC in rushing last year, and um, it should not be a surprise. He got off to a very slow start, 
Like most guys who transfer, he had a spring, and it took him a little bit of time to find his way. We were running quite a bit of option, which eliminated him in some plays, and we found our way to getting the football in a positive manner, which it should continue this year. Rob is an extremely hard worker, a great character kid from West Catholic in Philadelphia. Um, his teammates like him. He's out there every day competing, and uh, he's a pleasure to be around. He's 5'9", 170. I'm sure he gained a little bit of weight in the offseason, but you used him a lot as a kick returner as well last year. Uh, do we see that again? Oh, yes. I mean, he's an All-American, preseason All-American. Not that that means anything preseason. It means where you're out at the end of the season. But um, we will. Last year I held him out in the non-conference games because I wanted to, him to stay healthy throughout mm -hmm. the year. He's not. He's gained a little bit of weight, a little bit of muscle. He's very, very fast. He's a four-three forty guy who's got very good redirection. He runs behind his pads, and he's got very soft hands. I think one of the things you're going to see him us uh, throwing him the football more and putting him in situations where he can make plays there where he doesn't have to take the pounding in between the tackles. He's more than capable of running in between the tackles, but with his mass, we want to keep him healthy. What about uh, how is Dunzel Jones done? this summer. I know people are expecting bigger things from a big guy, Denzel Jones. He's a very good target. Uh, one of the things in the offseason we worked on Denzel's mechanics in route running, his releases, those were issues with him. He's always had good ball skills, but his concentration level had to go up. Denzel's worked incredibly hard. It's been very fascinating watching him um, compete and get better and develop as a leader. Um, I think you're going to see Denzel have a very, very good season. We have targeted him in him in different ways in matchups. I think you'll see him inside and outside, and I think you'll see some good things. And if hard work pays off, justice will be served. Denzel's thing was he was a big target, good hands, but he really wasn't very effective in yards after catch. That is not one of his strong suits. We worked on his uh, running ability after the catch, but it, it was focus and consistency, and, and that ran across the board throughout. Not only it started with me as a coach, it went down to the assistant coaches and started with the players. It's just not one instance that you could say caused that. It was something that we had a set of mindset to, to change habits, to change the way we process things to understand what we were trying to get done as a group. When you got 11 guys on the field, you have to be coordinated, and you got 85 on a team. Everybody is important, and everybody has to have a role, and, and that's what we worked on. And you're exactly right. Denzel's strong suit is not going to be running after the catch. It's something we have to improve on. But making the big catch and hold, holding on to the football at all times, you saw parts of it at times last year. Now you got to see it more often. Coach Mack, when you look at both sides of the ball on the on the line play, you've got a center in Blaze Rosati that's gonna that has experience now and, and will anchor that offensive line, and on the other side with uh, Willie Max and Joshua Lee, some of the guys, uh, the talent there and the experience, I think, will help you, especially early in a very tough non-conference part of the season. And Mark, there is no doubt that we have very good leadership there. We have Blaze Rosati, Taylor Fuller, and Tyler Hurd back with a lot of play, a lot of plays in their belt. And Tyler Hurd's got probably 600 game plays underneath their belt. They say after 700, you make a big, big jump. Taylor uh, has really improved in the off season. Um, his grip strength, his ability to dry block has really, really improved. Um, Blaze is a super competitor, a great leader, a great communicator. So we're very blessed to have him back there. And on the defensive line, Willie's got, you know, Willie had an up and down season last year, partly because of the injuries and um, the knickknack injuries, nothing major, but enough that would set you back. And uh, I feel like him, along with uh, Darnell Benjamin, Joshua Lazy, um, you're going to see something very good out of Austin Wesinewski. Uh, who, who's from Xavier, right out there out of Middletown. And he's had a very, very good camp. And uh, we got Victor Harris back and Elijah Yacht from New Britain, Connecticut. That'll be a name you'll hear. And I feel good about the whole front. And you, you really is always concentrated on Connecticut kids. I mean, you're a South Windsor native, and it's continued on. You like going after and bringing Connecticut talent here to CCSU. Well, one of the reasons is – we're here to meet the social economical needs of the area. And we've always found that if you were a regional school, if we bring Connecticut players in, your, your fundraising, your stands, 
name recognition in the newspapers is higher. We do have very, very good out-of-state players. And there's also the reason in regional schools is when you start from a non-scholarship program where we were eight years ago when Dr. Miller hired me and, and came up with the idea to set this program up in the facilities, it was a way we fiscally could do it. Obviously, if we were a nationwide recruiting school, we would consider doing that, but we're here for the region, and um, it's paid off. We've had two championship years, our fourth and fifth. We're majority of the players, all but three and nine, were all of our recruits, and in 10, all of them were. And um, it's, it's very important to us to get quality players from the state, and uh, we're very proud of that. All right, Coach, time to talk about the um, battle for the starting quarterback mm -hmm. position on Saturday versus JMU. Um, who's number one right now? Who's number two? Well, as we sit here today in this chair and getting interviewed on this Monday is the fact that uh, it's Andrew Clements. At the beginning of spring, the first week to ten days, Nick San Giacomo had an edge. And Andrew's really picked it up. He has not turned the ball over. He's executed at a high level. We have two quarterbacks that can help us win championships. Our plan is not to go with two. There will be one. We have evaluated all the tape. We are going to talk to the players. It is not finalized. I know I just sat here and said that Andrew has been better the last couple of weeks. It's got to be the body of work, and they're both competitors. And, um, and we keep them on edge. One reason why they've developed so well is the fact they've competed against each other, and each have been, has improved, which is a good thing for the Blue Devils. So I'm excited about it. And as everybody knows, it, you've got to have two. It very, you know, they're not, we're always wish for well health. But if you don't have two, you cannot win a championship. In 2009, if we had not had Hunter Wonkett, who played a majority of the first half of the season and put Aubrey in at certain times of the year, when Hunter got hurt at the Bryant game, who was out for the season, Aubrey Norris led us the last six games to an NEC outright championship and a Gridiron Bowl berth. And you have a brutal schedule early on as well, three CAA teams. Well, we're excited about it in the fact that uh, one of the things you have to look at is the NEC is really developed, and we have to play up. Our conference is capped at 40. The CAA has 63. But if we want to keep the automatic qualifier and show recognition, as Wagner did last year by beating the Patriot League champ, Colgate, and then going out and give Eastern Washington a heck of a game, we have to play up. And obviously, as a schedule, would you want to play for your first five on the road? Heavens no. But as a football coach, you show up to the games. That administrators set the schedule, and, and they do the best job they can for the program. And as a football coach, you play. And to sit there, there's no excuses. Our players do not want excuses. Our league doesn't want excuses. And uh, we're going to go out and compete and put our best foot forward. That being said, you have 12 games this year on the schedule. Yikes, only the second time mm -hmm. in school history, and we have been part of both of them. 2009, we played a 12th game against Butler, the only time in the history of the school that a team from CCSU played in December. And this year we're blessed to play 12 games and would like to play a game in December. In order to do that, we'll have to win one round of the playoffs. But right now we're taking it one game at a time. We're excited about the opportunity for our, our, our players our coaches, our administration, our, and really our CCSU student body to have activities on this great campus to support and uh, enjoy Blue Devil Nation. Real quickly, this is game week. Uh, how, has, uh, how does practice change from you know, fall camp or, or late summer camp into, into game week and getting ready for a very talented James Madison team? Well, it's kind of exciting. We, football is a game of phases. You know, you have your preseason. Then you go into your game season, and during that you start to recruit. Then you go into recruiting season. Then you go into your off season. Then you go into your spring ball season. Then you go into your summer season and back to August. And uh, that phase of it's always enjoyable. It's 24-7. Um, it's the one time a year where the student athletes do not have a lot of variables. There's a lot more controls on them. There's not as many time limits on them. And, I, and um, it's a lot of fun because you get to spend time with them where they're focused. And their social life is not quite as big, and there's no academic life at that time. Now we go into a very important phase, the academic side of CCSU. We started our 20-hour week on 20 on Sunday. Uh, we had four hours on Sunday. We are off on Monday, and off means off. And tomorrow on Tuesday we'll have 
four hours. And then on Wednesday, we'll do three and a half hours. On Thursday, we'll do three and a half hours. And we'll travel and do our, the rest of our hours with the competition on Friday. So it's a very, very exciting. It's easier for the coaches. We're used to flipping film. I mean, two, two practices a day, 200 plays to grade, one after another, after another, after another, and then come up with a plan to teach. That's why all that stuff has to be done ahead of time. And you have to change a little bit on the fly with your teaching materials. But with the use of video, it's a great way to develop skill. And the way you approach it is just like a classroom professor. You have to instruct in a way that they are able to learn. How about your opponent this week, James Madison? Um, picked 15th by the coaches, 19th in the Sports Network poll. Um, going to be a great experience for a lot of your kids have been there before two years ago um you have a lot of juniors and seniors on the team but what about for the for the newcomers i know that central played the first game there ever mm -hmm. at the stadium and uh, the thing that jumped out at me right away was that huge video board i know that uh tom pinson's was thrilled with that thing he's trying to bring that to ccsu but what about the experience uh, about going down to Virginia and taking on a team, one of the top teams in FCS, James Madison? Well, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you get a chance to play in a Division One atmosphere. They're an FCS school with an FBS mentality. They have a 25,000-seat stadium. They, they sell out. Um, the board is good. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if they put it on me, I don't like it as much. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'd rather have it on the players. Um, and I don't look up, but the thing is, it's a lot, a lot of fun. And we're going down there to play a football game and, and to do well. We're not ever going to predict victory because that would be disrespectful to our opponent. And we know they have a great running history with a great head coach with very, very good players, Mickey Matthews and his whole staff. Michael Kane, former head coach at NC State, is his new offensive coordinator. Um, they're very well coached. It's always fun to compete against people that do things the correct way. And we won't judge our success necessarily by the score on the scoreboard. We will judge our success that we make it look like football. And then if we play hard and things can go our way and we can be there close in the fourth quarter, you never know. But we have to get better and because the most important thing is that we win the NEC. If we win the NEC, we get an automatic bid to the NCAA playoffs. And that is our goal. Our, you know, one of our goals is to win them all, but the major goal is to make the NCAA playoffs. And you're kind of in unfamiliar territory being picked sixth this mm -hmm. year by the coaches. And that happens. Last year, Wagner was picked seventh, and they won the league outright, and they got better every week. Coach Hamline did a great job. His staff did a great job. Their players, most importantly, did a great job. Their players got better and developed and played with a lot of enthusiasm. And they were a very, very physical football team. And um, they were a lot of fun to watch. I have a lot, a lot of respect for every team in our league, especially Wagner coming off of last season. And, and um, you, you can't worry about preseason stuff because right now everybody's undefeated. Everybody's got to play 11 or 12 games, and everybody has to improve because if you don't improve, you will not win many games. And getting on the bus on Thursday and headed down to Virginia, right? Correct. We are uh, practicing from 315 to 515. We're going to muster up at a root field at 8 o'clock, pack our bags, load up the bus. Everybody's going to be on time, not before time, not after time, but on time. And we are going to pull out at 830. Um, and we will arrive in our destination at about 4.30, quarter to 5. And excited about it. Love the good bus rides. Coach, thank you. Um, like I said, a few days down the road, you get on the bus. James Madison, tough opponent. But uh, if the players are as ready as you, I think you'll put up a good showing. Fire up, baby. Let's have a great one. That's the head coach of Blue Devils, Jeff McInerney. I'm Bruce Beal. That's Mark Robbins. Thanks for joining us.